What do you think is the role of literature in someone's life? Diversity is not about how we differ. Diversity is about embracing one another's uniqueness. That's according to Ola Joseph. Some of us thought that being different is a big issue that is hard to deal with. But the truth is, it is a matter of acceptance. And that is according to Stephen R. Covey. He also mentioned that strength lies in differences, not in similarities. We should be proud of our own uniqueness because it is the way for us to be known. As an intelligent FCPCN, you are expected to demonstrate the importance of expressing ideas accurately in oral and in written forms. For our today's lesson, we'll be able to get in touch about the different genres of literature for us to know their uniqueness and characteristics or classifications. And at the end of our lesson for today, you are expected to analyze the different genres, languages, elements and techniques in writing creatively and determine the subgenres and justify fiction and drama as a good convention in writing creatively. Before we continue, I want you to imagine this scenario. You went to the bookstore. Books were not classified according to its, to its types. So what does it look like? Is it appealing to the eye or is it kind of annoying? Well, for sure, we want things to be arranged accordingly, just like the type of books we read or we are reading. We want it as cohesive as it should be. So today, we are going to talk about the conventions of traditional genres. So, there are two kinds of words. The first word would be the literal word which means exactly as it says or it says. It is factual and does not involve fashioning or fabricating. Example, the dictionary defines the apple as a round, red, or green edible fruit. And the another form of word would be non-literal language, or it could be a figurative language. It is a figurative or the transfer of a different meaning to the literal word. It is a word painted to make us see something that literal language would not make us see. For example, the apple can be used in a saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, which promotes good health. More examples would be the green thumb, that means exceptional in gardening skills, tying the knot, which is getting married, or and flea and flea market, which is a bazaar. So if we're just going to look the literal meaning of these phrases in, in the dictionary, apparently there will be um, a literal meaning that we could paint on it. But if we're going to use this one as a figurative phrase, apparently there would be different meaning, different from the one that we get in the dictionary. So now let us continue in determining what are what is the meaning or what do we mean when we say genre. So genre is a French word that means the classification of the variety and diversity of text or writing we encounter every day. It is also a tacit bond between the writer and the reader. It shapes the writer's writing habits in order to fulfill the reader's expectation. As we continue, let us talk about literature. Literature is derived from the Latin word literatura, that means letter or handwriting, and it is also used to describe written and sometimes spoken material. And as we talk about literature, it is fair enough to talk about the literary genre, which is a type or category of literature. So there are four main types of literary genres and eight subgenres. I am pretty sure that you are already familiar with all of this because we have already discussed these topics during our creative writing class. The first one would be fiction. So when we say fiction, it is a believable, make-believe story. It is usually written in the form of a short story and a longer novel. Fiction is all about fantasy, or its subgenre would be fantasy, which is a story in a fantasy world. Example would be Harry Potter. And then the no next one would be a folklore, which is an old cultural stories, including fairy tales, fables, myths, legends, and tall tales. 
we also have the term or we also have historical fiction, which is a fiction story based in real life history. Also, we have a mystery, uh, which is a story about a crime and realistic fiction, a story that seems real, but it, is, it isn't real or true. And as we continue, we have romance, which is all about love story, a science fiction, a story in the future with advanced technology. So more likely, this one is a futuristic type of a story. And also thriller or suspense, a story that makes readers nervous or excited. After fiction, let us talk about nonfiction. So it refers to literature based in facts again. These stories or this type of literatures are based on fact. So these are the things that are really happening in reality. It's the broadest category of literature. So this includes different categories, including the biography, business cooking, health and fitness, pets, crafts, home decorating, languages, travel, religion, art, and music, history, crime, science, and you more, and even your autobiography is is one of a, one of um, the nonfiction that is common or that is um, that we can see around us. So nonfiction has its subgenres. The first one will be the biography, just like what I mentioned a while back, the story of a person's life. And also the, uh, an autobiography, a story the author writes about himself or herself. Narrative nonfiction, a story or narrative that happened in real life. And also we have the periodicals. These are the magazines, the newspapers, the journals that are written regularly or weekly. And of course we have reference materials or these are the books with facts in alphabetical order. So this might be dictionary, the Cyrus and encyclopedia and even your researches even the essays that we do or essays that we write those are types of non-fiction after non-fiction we have a very common um type of literature which is poetry so it is using language and sounds in special ways to express ideas so it it is more likely utilizing our emotion or both of our emotions and creativity so a poem could be a lyrical poem, okay, a poem about the speaker's thoughts. So most poems are in lyrics, examples or elegy, an ode, a uh, sonnet or an haiku. We also have a narrative poetry wherein it tells a story. That's why it has some sort of characters. It is also describing the setting and it has its story. Example, an epic, which is a long poem about the hero, lots of bottles, and the fights that the hero wins in the end. And also we have the dramatic poetry, it includes soliloquy, dialogue, and monologue. And last one would be a drama. So drama is a unique and distinctive genre of literature presented by actors, actresses on a stage through a dialogue or it could be in a monologue. So it is a story created or story acted through the combination of performances, music, dance, props, and so on and so forth. So in a nutshell, when we say drama, is it is a type of literature that is meant to be presented in in or before an audience. Okay, subgenres of dramas are this one, comedy, a funny or humorous drama with a happy ending and tragedy, a sad drama with a sad ending. So for example, would be Romeo and Juliet. Okay, so that's it for our discussion. I hope that you have learned something today.